Welcome, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign, playing as a nation I have previously played, but with an updated Focus 3. So, as per normal, custom game rules and everything is going to be set to default. I have no idea what's going to happen, as we have historical AI focuses off, and we shall begin our journey as New Canaan. So, before we get too far, the mods we're using are Color Buttons, Colored Events, Player-Led Peace Conferences, Old World Blues, Stage Entry Tool Mod, as well as the sixth mod, Old World Blues Mod Compilation 2, just to spice up the wasteland a little bit more. So, we shall be playing as New Canaan, in which we must be prepared for our eventual, potential, holy war. Because New Canaan, it, it's, even though we haven't seen it yet, it's not doing very well. We're led by Jeremiah Rigdon, and he's well liked, but we have a couple of natural spirits, such as Prophets from the Utah Caravans. Very good, very good. We have church schools, which is awesome. We need some more church schools. We get weekly religious immigrants, even though it hurts our stability. Actually, I'm really glad about that, because we are going to need those immigrants. We have Decadence's Clutches, which is not super great, and then we have the White Legs Threat, so we must be ready. But first, we have the Time of Judges, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, prepared for the end of days, but even we were not prepared for the Great War. Some of our survivors stayed in a vault, led by one of the Church's elders, but the Prophet did not make it to the vault and perished in the blast. The survivors in the vault elected a new Prophet. But in this fallen wasteland, the prophets took inspiration from the judges of the Old Testament. That is right. We are all elders here. I'm Elder Mocha Lover, and I hope you're having a great day. So we have some motorcycles. Jerusalem's disciples, Canaan's disciples. As much as I really want to use motorized, this template just isn't cutting it with three motorized battalions and two special forces. I like the support equipment, but you know what? I'm kind of a generic type of guy, so we're going to go with the tribal faithful. Everyone will become a faithful member. And we shall have led by Kirby Chapman. Before we get too far, we are civilized, I believe. Yes, we are. Let's do the tried and true normal good stuff. Grab some industrial planning, get some of that. And you know what? Crowd control, that stuff. I'm going to begin going down conventional warfare. I think that would fit us, the great Mormon nation of New Canaan, fairly, fairly well. Alright, see, I, you know what? I would love to use basic melee weaponry. You know, I would love to eventually fist for Christ. I would love to use that. Fist for Christ. But you know what? I think for this campaign, we're still going to be shooting for Christ. Shooting for Christ. I think that's a good thing. Alright, let's come over here, do that, get a boat. We're not going to spend too much time with it, though. And so we have some guns. We've got a, some motorcycles, which we can use at factory for other means. We're going to need some trouble scout kits, because we, we will be using special forces. So, goodbye. So we have one, two, three. What are we missing? One, two, three. Oh. There we go. We're not missing anything. Cool. We're going to need quite a bit of support equipment where we are going. Three is fine for now. And divisions and basic training. I'm going to save these Disciples of God for later on. So... Uh, let's see, militia force, we gotta keep that on, don't even care about looking at that. So this division, 18 combat with, not bad, it also comes with some recon, which is great. Go ahead and train three divisions, because we're gonna need quite a few divisions where we are going. Spec Ops, that's not bad, we'll train some later on, because I wanna make those things better. And sure, let's just let time go on. So right now, we have, our, or we are led by Kirby Chapman, and let's maybe, we could grab another general, but we have the time of judges. When well, the bombs fell, the prophet did not make it to the vaults. One of God's elect was chosen as overseer, and he tried to guide the Church of Latter-day Saints through the darkness that followed. God's chosen people remember the tales of Neph, Nephi, and Joseph Smith, of Jesus and Abraham. They turned to their ideals to guide us through. Judge Samson compared our time to the past moments in the Christian faith. Did we stay in the vault like the Israelites in the desert, or compared to Joseph Smith's expedition, what was a vault? Now, I like this to get more energy. Actually, that's actually not too bad. That's actually really, really helpful to get more energy, because we have none right now. We get scrap metal, which is okay. We lose manpower, which is eh. But we get a two, level 2 bunker in Colville, or some advanced components. Now, later on, we're really going to need advanced components. And energy will be easy to come by. So, let's just go with we stayed in the vault like the Israelites in the desert. Ehud's decision. One of New Canaan's prophets was Ehud, who saved New Canaan from a raider threat. And how he handled the rugged survivalists set an example for the faithful. And since we are here already, let's go ahead and make some changes and accommodate ourselves in the north. Now, we will need this uh, as a field marshal, but let us wait and see first. Let's go ahead and pause it real quick. Uh, Ehud's, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, Ehud's, Ehud's decision, and his courage. And the children of New Canaan did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord strengthened Ryan King of Farfield against New Canaan because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. But when the children of New Canaan cried out to the Lord, the our Lord God raised up a deliverer for them. 
Ehud the son of Jason. By him, the children of New Canaan sent tribute to Ryan, king of Farfield. Now Ehud made himself a dagger, fastened it under his clothes on the right thigh. So he brought the tribute to Ryan, king of Fairfield. And when he had finished presenting the tribute, he sent away the people who had carried the tribute. But he himself turned back from the Nuka-Cola sign that was at Fairfield and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. God commands you to work with us, not against us. Or, then Ehud thrusted the dagger into his belly. Ooh, so it's kind of painful. I would love to get more war support. We get a whole factory. Do we really need another factory? We could use one. Um, War support, though, sounds really nice. Army XP sounds pretty good right now. Uh, hmm. We can always get more war support later on. Let's go with this armed workshop. And the Man of Valor. Gideon came to power as New Canaan began to control Utah and the West trade routes. Faced with threats from Montana and tribes to the south, he represents to some the height of our power. Very, very good. Now, with New Canaan, you have to be very aware of what, what could happen. Because right now, we can't change out of a conscription level, which is going to be a little bit difficult. Which is not the only thing we can't change, but Gideon's wisdom. The New Canaanites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the mutants. Because the power of the mutants was so oppressive, the New Canaanites prepared shelters for themselves in the mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. And God sent them a prophet, who said... This is what the Lord your God says. I bring you up out of Illinois, out of the land of slavery, and I delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land, but you have abandoned him. I Illinois is known as a state of slavery, apparently. And Gideon asked God, but the Lord is with us. Why has all this happened to us? Where are his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of the white legs. Why? They cried. And the Lord replied, Go in strength you have and save New Canaan out of the mutants' hands. Am I not sending you? Gideon put, preached to the mutants, which we change our tr recruitment tra training law to recruit all mutants, and we get political power, which is good. Or, they pursued the mutants and brought the heads to Gideon. Hmm, heads, you say. Now, recruitment training law. No mutants allowed. Well, with, with the Latter-day Saints, I think maybe we'll... Day on mutants. We're not going to expand the definition of human, as some might put it. So I think, as much as I'd like to get political power, we can get some more army XP and maybe a little bit of a war support. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Deborah was never a formal prophet, for the church would not let women lead, but love her or hate her. Her sh rule shaped New Canaan. Taking the simple title of mayor, she trod over the prophet of the time. Oh, look at Jeremiah. He looks like he's really... He's not had a good time, man. He has not had a good time. Holy cow. Under Deborah, New Canaanite traders ranged to New Vegas and California and made contact with the Midwest Brotherhood. But she also encouraged deviants, letting sodomites live openly, letting bars and brothels flaunt themselves in exchange for a licensing fee, and taxing the poor to support a mighty army. Deborah was overthrown in a populist uprising inspired by the faith. But Deborah died unrepentant and claiming she would be welcomed into the arms of the Lord. Her final words were a quote from Brigham Young himself. The male portion of the fa human family are the lords of the earth, and they are full of wickedness, evil, and destruction, and especially in the acts towards the female sex. But God will hold them accountable. Villagers hold back until I, Deborah, arose a mother in Israel, or so may all of your enemies perish, Lord. We get a new division, and even more war support. I love war support and divisions, but political power? Hmm, do we really want political power in a time like this? Uh, we get Freeman's Fixers, which, which would be nice. Mormon's Quartermaster. You know what? As much as I love this, we get... That's basically free manpower out of that, but only really a hundred. That political power could be immediately used for other things, such as research, which is actually something that I want right now. So, villagers held back until I, Deborah, arose as a mother from Israel. So, now we can do a growing threat... Or decadence clutches. What you're going to do is get some political power first. Our people have been rich or getting rich from the trade routes that crisscross the Utah waste. As a result, people have begun to stray from the Lord in their efforts to get more caps. Time will tell where this leads. Now, I don't want us to become a very decadent society. That does not seem very good. Even though it gives us a little bit more stability and a little more elite support, decadence does not suit God's needs. And why I wanted more political power... Also, I do want to let you know before I say that, we like how we cannot switch out of our conscription law until we have uh, so we get rid of self-sufficient society and one of these three focuses we which is going to take forever to get down we also cannot get rid of this self-sufficient society we to get rid of this we have to have more than 60% war support or be at war so this really sucks 
So, just to be sure, so that we're on defense, like I said, we're going down conventional warfare. We're going to go with Horus Abercrombie, which ha sounds like he has a store, but anyways. He's a military theorist, and he's going to really help us help us out with conventional warfare. For where we're going, we're going to need a lot of defense, and a lot of conventional defense at that. So, that is why I've chosen him immediately, and chosen political power over other people. Uh, we're gonna, we are going to immediately begin a scavenging program, and buy guns. I usually don't buy guns, he's quite this fast, but that's okay. No, those not quite Mormon. We'll also control a large amount of territory outside of our holy cities. Much of it has yet to be properly see the light. In an effort to avoid another sack of New Jerusalem at the hands of disgruntled outsiders, we have more or less opened our borders for all those seeking a peaceful life, helping our relations with the tribes around us significantly, but hurting our Mormon dominance. For the most part, we can keep rival power bases in check, but two groups are per of particular concern to us, the Brigham Barons in the North, led by the young industrialist Rachel May, and Fairfield Wallband, led by Marcus Furness, whose parents led the original sack of New Jerusalem. Whilst neither of these two are openly rebellious, we fear one or the other may soon be if we do not take action to help them and their followers feel a part of our country. So we really want to make sure that they don't kill us off here. And we don't want any sort of revolt, which means it's going to take a political power to get rid of them, but that's okay. So let's see, we don't want to choose this one because we're going to lose our political power, which really sucks. So we need to have at least four from each one, or I guess three, completed three actions to shore up our authority in Brigham. And four from Farfield. So Brigham, let's see. Brigham, this is Brigham Revolts. We get Army XP, that's not bad. Brigham. We lose six scrap, but we get an Arms Workshop. Cool. And another one from Brigham. Let's see, which one is Brigham, Brigham, Brigham? So these two are Brigham's. It looks like lose manpower, max planning. I'd rather do that one. And now we need four for Farfield. It's totally fine, because we only need three for this and four for that. We can let time go on just a little bit more. Oh, Art of Haggling, great. Let's see, so this is Farfield. Resource efficiency gain, that is fine. Over here, less mobilization speed for more civilian factory. We lose four scrap, but we get a civilian factory. That's fine with me. And let's see, less, minus 10 army XP, but we get manpower. I think that's pretty good. And building dwellings, we lose consumer goods, factories for three days, and we're done. There shall be no revolt in New Canaan. God does not want rebellion, for we have been rebellious enough, and we've been quite the sinners. That's not cool. Sinning is not cool, man. Have you heard of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? He doesn't like sinners. But he accepts sinners. Ah, industrial planning. Great, great. Uh, yeah, we'll do work as needed. We'll go and grab this one too. And over here, we'll grab more research now. Get combat language. Now we will get dogs. We'll get stuff like that. Yeah, we'll definitely get dogs. Probably anti-tank. It's almost mandatory to get anti-tank in every campaign. Income report. Good. Good. I only grab more guns because we need them. We need them right now. We need even more right now. So that's not good. We need a lot of guns, especially for our current divisions and what we're going to need later on. Let's see. So we have four, right? Is this almost done? We currently have one done. That is currently zero done, but that's four over here. Expand Northern Garrisons. I don't want to lose my manpower. I don't want to lose political power. Decadence, clutches. So we can't do anything over there, but we'll do a growing threat. Down to the south, past the 80s and the Tar Walkers, down close to Colorado. A tribe that calls itself the White Legs resides. This tribe is rapidly militarizing and seems hell-bent on conquering Utah for itself. But it won't come this far north, right? No one could hurt us as long as we believe in the Lord our God, right? Well, let's hope so, because eventually we're going to have to make a choice when it comes to Canaan and Flames, or Canaan and Glory. I don't know what, how we're going to get down there, but I hope we'll have Canaan and Glory and we don't lose too much. But we'll see what happens. I can't promise you anything with this campaign. Uh, we could get more guns. Actually, that would be really, really, really good. But I'm going to go with this first, just because I want to build. We're going to build so much. Ah, corruption in New Canaan. A scandal has rocked New Canaan as the press has revealed that some of the New Canaanite leaders are taking bribes in exchange for government favors. What a bunch of sinners. Brahmin ranchers, gun runners, and others have been abusing our nation for their own personal gain. Many critics wonder if New Canaan is worth dying for if its leaders will tolerate this sort of misconduct. This is how we've always done it, or we will root out this injustice. We have to root it out. We have to. We absolutely have to meet southern leaders. No, we good. And the scope of this campaign is for us to eventually restore the state of Utah. That's really what we really, really want. The nation of God, you bet we want to get there. And you know what? I hope you want to get there as well. Because this is going to be quite the journey because it's been a while since I've played as a good old Mormon nation. It's been quite a while. Let's see. Commander Ambrose Maxi. Ironside's cool. Go ahead and train and see where you end up. Uh, we're going to wait for that. There you go. Reference manuals. Very good. We're going to get so much naval XP that we don't know what to do with it. I might not even research naval stuff. That's happened several times. 
Ah, <sighs> special projects. Okay, so the Reclamation Authority, Jeremiah Rigdon, has decided to construct a Reclamation Authority devoted to promoting scavenging in the Wasteland. This will give our nation expertise in scouring the waste. The old world secrets will be ours. Alright, so what do we have here? Currently three. Uh, that's almost done three days. That's almost 21 days. Ah, followers of the apocalypse arrive. Uh, from the 80s, freedom's right of every wastelander. Uh, the followers of the apocalypse first originated in the Boneyard, one of the NCR's sprawling settlements far to our west. Since their creation, the followers have gradually expanded and trickled down across the wasteland, finding followers and sympathizers as they spread. Whilst the core of the followers remain more or less confined to the NCR, advanced parties work their ways across the wasteland with the mission of teaching medicine and helping those in need. One of the advanced parties far to our south became or to the tyrannical legion led by Kaisar, and one of our sons from us in the process, or took one of them. Now another advanced party has come to us in Utah. They offer our secrets. They offer the secrets of the pre-war medicine in exchange for peace and hospitality. Can we trust this party either? Which actually, with the Mormons here, we have a unique little few decisions to take with focuses regarding the followers of the apocalypse. Cool. And this will take how many days? Twenty days. That's not too bad. So we got time for that. So we, decisions, foc focuses, eventually come unlocked, and that's how we can do followers of the apocalypse. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Civilian workshop, 100 political power. That's a pretty good focus. That's a pretty goddamn good focus. Oh, don't want to take the Lord's name in vain. My apologies, I'm a sinner. Alright, cool. Cool, cool. Uh, buy more guns. The Lord said, buy guns. B G. Buy guns. Shooting for Christ, that's what we're doing. Dimension warfare, great. Battle plans, yes, please. Uh, just make more guns for now. Eventually, we will research all support, all stuff, all types of support equipment, if I can speak. And we're getting more daily army speed, which is very nice. So, how's this? Yep. No revolts here. God said no, and we follow through. At least we try. We may falter here and there, but we try our best. Cool. Now it's going to hurt manpower, which sucks, but that's okay. We got one, too. Oh, we got another one. Uh, we could get more output. Just go and grab more output. That's fine for now. We need to get gliders as well, because those will come in handy quite a bit. Actually, we'll grab gliders. We might emphasize close air support first. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, we won't have the industry for close air support. I was thinking about it, but nah. Anything else here? Not really. Uh, we could go with outsider battalions, but that won't really matter right now. Special forces attack, division attack defense. Over here, just come back over here and grab. We could grab more stability, but that can wait. What's, oh, it's down here. Coming convert. I really don't have much to do with my political power, honestly, and... Over here, we could get less daily political power for more cap and growth and better infantry equipment, but I'm just going to grab this for now. Master impact minus 0.5. We'll probably get rid of this later on. But if you know me, I just love political power so much. Probably too much, honestly. Good. The tribal faithful are coming back at least. At last. Matthew Payne. At well, least perceptive. Perceptive to Payne. Sniper observant leader. Uh, sure, we can go down that path. Let's see. Land night attack. Reconnaissance. We're gonna max out the reconnaissance here. So we're gonna need reconnaissance. So Pioneer Day, my friends. Today is Pioneer Day, a major Mormon festival celebrated yearly by the Mormons of Utah and beyond. It is on this day in 1847 that Brigham Young and his followers arrived in the Salt Lake City Valley, or Salt Lake Valley, where they would go on to found Salt Lake City, or as we now call it, New Jerusalem. Whilst New Jerusalem is a mere shadow of the grandeur Salt Lake City possessed, every year we can see yet more progress towards the rejuvenation of the city. So, in honor of our progress towards a new tomorrow, one closer to God, together we shall feast. Dance and sing our songs. I love this postage. This place is the place. The Utah Centennial. Stability, political power. What more could you ask for? Everyone worshiping God? Yeah, well, I guess we could ask for that. That's okay. So right now, we could persecute the followers and expel all followers of the apocalypse from our lands, permanently preventing them from spreading to us again, or embrace the followers, which we're going to do, even though I don't want to increase decadence. Uh, we get refined mixture. We get more focuses. We can get an outpost. We get more influencers, followers influence so let's embrace followers beloved it is a faithful thing you do in all of your efforts for these brothers strangers as they are now the reason why i'm doing that is because i actually enjoy i don't enjoy it but i like getting the followers of the influence so we can get some more civilian factories they can help us with research they give us support equipment if we need it we get some more water some more building slots they actually are pretty darn useful even though we might think that they're very very weird and they totally are weird don't get me wrong they're weird they're strange followers of the apocalypse the only the followers following that you should do is a following of God, but you know, whatever. They're a bunch of pacifists, they won't kill us or hurt us. And I just grabbed Aaron Grant here because even though I don't really care for less training time, really, I want less infantry equipment costs. That's really what I was rooting there for. And we shall grant them bases. 
Because fr train frontline medics, that's okay. We can really just kind of wait for it, though. So, the followers, although odd, seem to be good folk. They don't worship so much as follow a set of principles. They want to bring peace back to the wasteland. The world tends towards destruction, so they try to make a difference. And that's there's nothing wrong with trying to make a difference, as long as it's a good difference. Not a bad, evil difference, but that's okay. Uh, let's see, did you get something down there? I can't tell. Uh, for this group, Mysterious Stranger actually would be pretty good. But considering what might happen soon... I'm going to make sure we get enough defense. We could get even more recon. Because I know this person we just gave so much recon. What if we just try to max... Let's try to max out recon. Let's try that. I don't know what's going to happen. But let's try it. Let's, ooh, that's a black exception. Ooh. Nimble leader. More speed. Let's attack and defense. Huh. Let's try it out. So I'm going to run out of things here to actually use. Stability that can wait. Cultural advisor. More stability. I don't want to do that one either. Uh... I don't want to lose political power right now. Over here, we're definitely going to go with this one to get more max entrenchment, division, defense on core territory, which would be nice. Um, there's really not much we can choose, so we can choose Victoria Flyer, just so we can research planes faster, I guess. That's very nice. We're about to get paid soon, very soon. We still need more infantry equipment. And that's exactly why I really like getting weekly manpower, because our manpower is going to slowly go down and down and down and down. Which is not a good thing. Which is very much not a good thing whatsoever. But we grant the followers the bases. Now next up, can we do anything else? No, we can't. So we might as well do train frontline medics. The followers are willing to serve as medics or troops in the light of our support. Great. Now we lose some war support, but we'll get some more war support later on. And this is exactly what I want. Ask the followers help? Yes. This is almost, in my mind, mandatory. So you get some more civilian factories so you can build more stuff more quickly. More, 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 more. We probably will buy support equipment later on. Research speed's not bad. Uh, you get more water. That's not bad. Just because we're going to need a lot of support equipment. Because we're going to get chem companies. We're going to get other things that I can't think of right now. Like uh, logistic companies, maybe. I can't remember. We'll get a lot of stuff. Cool? Cool. Militarized society. That's not worth it, man. That's totally not worth it. And I'm surprised we don't have any other events yet that pop up. A little surprised, but it'll pop up eventually, probably. Over here, go. we could do that. Get some more planes. Because I did grab that company, and that's what we wanted. Resistors? I love resistors. A little bit ahead of time, we can wait. Go ahead and grab... Uh, grab organized agriculture, that's fine. We don't... N oh, there it is. We don't need crowd control gear just yet. For a while. Ogden. The name of the old world settlement in which we created the city, we now call it New Kingdom. Few buildings in Ogden survived the massive nuclear warhead that hit the city. And even fewer survived the decades of harsh winter, or weather, and scavenging that followed the bombs. One of these buildings, however, is Ogden Armory. Once a small National Guard armory and headquarters, the rapid militarization of the U.S. preceded the Great War, developed the armory to a sprawling complex that coordinated most of the National Guard activity in the Utah area. Whilst the ground levels of the armory are mostly being cleared out by scavengers long before our arrival, the lower levels require a degree of expertise to access the most common scavengers lack. As a result, it has recently been discovered that there are a substantial cache of weapons and supplies under the armory, a cache that is ours for the taking, and get four thingamabobs. Just in time. How lucky are we? Now, we can't do anything on the left, which is disappointing, but we can explore the armory. We have had a little time or need to explore the pre-war armory in Ogden, but dis desperate times call for desperate measures. Let's find the guns of our forefathers. We get guns, support equipment, what more could you ask for? More followers? I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the followers. I want more followers. We need more, but... That can sort of wait for now. Now, after this, we get we can do arms for the church, which increases our decadence, which I don't like. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Arms for officers, which I do kind of like, or send arms to the tribes, so which means the threat of the white legs has to go up, 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 and we need to complete provide direct assistance focus to do that, which is all the way over here. That's pretty far away. So we'll see what happens. We got some battle plans, that's great. We got some local workspaces, we need to build fewer fortifications. We're going to focus very heavily on defense for our infantry in this campaign. And let's go ahead and grab this for less division training time. Let time go on as we continue to train our soldiers in the way of Christ. <sighs> I'm going to say it again. I love shooting for Christ. We're going to shoot, 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 shoot if we need to. Keep building, keep building, keep building. It's only November 2275. Ooh, followers influence, which is normal. Plus 10% research, research speed is pretty good. And the medics of the Lord. God says, save your fellow man, unless he can't save himself. So then, you might not do some bad stuff. But we're going to scavenge for vehicles. Even though we only have six caps now, that's really not good. But we have enough infantry equipment for now. Organized agriculture, good. Multi population, we're going to grab seed selection, which is a good, good thing. And maybe get some flying machines. That sounds like fun. Flying machines are always great. Uh, go ahead and grab the next level. You might as well. Crazy horns, good, good, good. Oh, wait. Wait. What happened? Oh, no, we're not crazy horns. They were taken out. That was early. Holy cow. Usually, I don't see them getting taken out that quickly. 
What? Dead... Oh, man, because I, I, I played this off-screen before, and uh, I really kind of needed the crazy horns there. We'll see what happens. Uh, we can't really do much else. Arms for the church. I really don't want to increase my decadence. Well, let's do arms for the officers. The argument can be made that we should give the firearms to our officers instead of those loyal to the judge. Sure, yes, for now. Because I, I really don't know how, which, how we're going to proceed through the path once we if we can beat up the white legs. So this will be definitely interesting. And these guys are going to suffer so much bad things. Bad things, yes, bad things. You might as well do Saraya June. I mean, I can't even make planes right now, but... It is what it is, I guess we'll say. I'm kind of hoping we get more events unlocked so we can do stuff more quickly. Ooh, what's going on over here? Camel Station just took out the Antelope Tribe. I don't think I've ever seen that. And the Troll Warren are looking pretty thick. Pretty thick. Yeah, that's a big Camelot station. Vipers look like they're getting defeated. Totally fine. Scavengers triumph! Hey! In the ruins of an ancient factory. Our scavengers found a pre-war good. Our caravan of trucks is bringing the expedition's plunder back to New Canaan. This is a great triumph for us. Or we're planning. Eh, that's not really that great. That's okay. At least they made it back. And that's probably the most important thing. Gun-wise, we're still doing okay. Not great, but okay. Let's see. So, these guys are looking pretty good. We need to get some... Actually... Uh, don't want to forget about chems. Don't want to forget about them. It's going to cost us a little bit more manpower, but that's okay. Everyone go ahead and train if we need to. We've got some seed selection. Happy 2276, my friends. It's going to be a good year for us, I hope. I hope it is. Oh, we're training good. Crowd control. That can wait a little bit. That can wait a little bit. That can wait a little bit. Uh, that, this stuff cannot wait. We get doggos. I'm going to go for explosives. We're going to explode for Christ. I'm going to call it a crusade. Now, what can we do next? Nothing. Um, okay. We got some motorized flight. I was hoping that some of the events would spawn a little bit faster, but obviously they are not, which is disappointing, but whatever. Well, we're getting a lot of political power now. Uh, just in case, if we ever have to defend, I'm going to choose more defense on core territory. That's just very nice. Decadence clutches, less political power, less consumer goods factories, more stability, more daily elite support, so. Even though they're both led by Jeremiah Rigdon, so, yeah. Cool. Our guns now, not bad. Support equipment, not bad. Uh, spec Ops, at the very minimum, you gotta be 20 combat width. Or you're just too un ineffective, in my mind. Nice. And do that too. Thank you. Now we'll throw on recon on these guys a little bit later though. Because we don't have enough army XP, but that's okay, we'll get there. We shall get there. Another division, fuel fortifications, good. And according to the assault, even more breakthrough for the entire army? Yes, please. So, it looks like we're running out of manpower. And you're correct. We are. That's not good. <laughs> and we're out of guns again. Oh, my goodness. There's never enough guns for the religious people. Hmm. They should make their own. Seriously, when are we going to get the next thing unlocked? Because I think it's completely random. If things get unlocked, unless the white legs do something. I'm really disappointed that the dead horses actually killed off those guys already. That's big sadness. Big, big, big sadness. Anything we can do down here? Demo teams, infantry equipment. We could produce more, but soft attack and reliability go down, which I don't like at all. Outposts. That might be actually very useful for us. Shovelers. We're not even using shovels yet. <sighs> mm, peaceful missionary. Oh, here we go. Nice. What can we do? Ah! Attempt limited rearmament. If we're to survive a white legs attack, we need guns. We can't do much to achieve that goal, though the congregation will still refuse to believe that an attack is likely. Look, you can believe what you want to believe, but when it happens, it happens. So, let's just be ready. And also, I'm going to go with outsider battalions. It just makes sense. If we're welcoming religious immigrants here, we want as many outsider battalions to help us as possible. Corruption Canaan? Oh, wait. Uh, I think we already read this one. I'd rather lose political power since political power is kind of expendable right now. Hmm. Here's a question for you guys. What do you think is better? Should we grill for Christ? Or should we make our enemies explode for Christ? What do you think is better? I'm thinking we might grill. Was Christ a griller? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Frag grenades or flamethrowers? That's actually that's actually a really good question to ask. What do you think what do you think Jesus would do? Would he grill? Was Jesus a griller? He might have been a centrist. Oh well. Uh, look at that. This is why I love the weekly manpower. I love immigrants, especially the religious immigrants. We need more. We just need more, man. Oh my goodness. And we only get how many months? 15? Oh, it's not good enough. 
Maybe I should cut down on this, maybe just a little bit. There we go. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Five plane fighters, great. Come back over here. Uh, that's okay. Grab that. That's good. Good, good, good. Player working, great. Uh, we can grab that one. Go, go here as well. Because I do want to keep an eye on, or make sure, that we have some energy. Because I do want to use an Air Force. Uh, going to scavenge. That's more important than buying guns right now. Scavenge or get... Use an Air Force, have enough energy to use the Air Force so we can defend ourselves properly. Now, I'm going to expect that in this campaign, we will probably have to fight the White Legs. Because of that, they might ally with the 80s, which would make it extremely difficult to actually win. Because because the way we're going, I'm going to be able to defend against the White Legs probably pretty easily, hopefully. But if they ally the 80s, that's going to become almost impossible. So, to do this, look, are we going to need manpower? I will, I, we have to go to Wasteland Militias because we can't get out of this anyways. We need manpower. As much as I'd like to go down this way to get another unit of tribal militia, as well as get another arms workshops, we're going to go with, we need an army of our own. To fend off any possible aggressors, we need to field an army of Canaanites. Tribals will not do when it comes to defending the homeland. Which is absolutely true. Go look how much, how little manpower we have. We need more. And also, we have freedom of speech. Uh, freedom of speech isn't bad. Multiple descent. I like a state press, though. Hmm, state press ain't bad. It's the Lord's press, some might say. The Lord's press. Cool. The Rio Grande, Texas Arms Association, another division. Ah, the faithful, truly. Uh, glory, oh, glory falls. That's not good. Go ahead and start making a division here. Just maybe like one or two. We're running out of manpower already. Look at that. That's so bad. Oh, it hurts me. I hurt it. It hurts me when I see that. Uh, another pioneer day. Blessed be our ancestors. Now, who do I grab? We could grab some more voice and survival training for a less. For, I guess, technically more training time, but more organization, less justify war goals times. There's really not much else we can really choose here, though. New Reno declared one Yakuza territory is very cool. Yeah, there's just not anything here. We're on battle hardened soldiers. We could use, lose more political power. No old world planning. Uh, I mean, we could do that. We might as well, I guess, for now. And good, good, good. We can wait on that. Uh, okay, that. Uh, let's grab that. More cap and growth. Cap and growth is always nice, right? Always nice. Hang dogs were annexed. Good. And the white legs are slowly moving up to the timekeepers. You guys are killing each other. Oh, the male drinkers are not having a good time. The she. Wow, the she are doing pretty well. Look at that. Scavengers triumph. Timekeepers were annexed. Get a bonus of vehicle technology, even though we're not going to be using vehicles early on in this campaign, if ever. So, anyway, many prospectors. I do want to save a few more caps. I might need to buy some more guns, but it looks like we're doing okay for now, but we'll see what happens. So, end of the timekeepers. Over the past few days, a steady trickle of refugees has entered our lands from the south. These refugees originate from a pre-war vault, Vault 24, whose twisted experiment seems to have revolved around playing with the effect of time on its occupants. Despite managing to survive the cruel experiment played on them, vault Tech played one last trick, indoctrinating them with all the belief that if they don't manage to fix the time machine, place in the center of the vault, they will be unable to send their best soldier back in time to protect the vaults created from death, resulting in the time paradox completely wiping them out of existence. While this is clearly nonsense, the appearance of these refugees poses significant questions to our leadership. Do we accept these deluded fools? What about their leadership? Does this set a precedent we will be f bound to follow? And we should get the incident the end of the timekeepers. Cool. An army of our own. Let's grab this. And I'd love to go down mechanized warfare. But we'll probably do that when we play as the 80s someday, which I don't know when that'll happen. Let's go with triple warfare. Prepare defense. So now we can assist with tribals. We could do quality or quantity over quality, which is okay. We lose some organization for mass faster mobilization. We could do allowed timekeeper refugees into our lands. We get some more manpower. And then we could choose welcome the timekeepers, where our decadence will increase, and we get two advisors, or we reject the idolaters, in which we reject or we only get one advisor. I think we're going to assist the tribals first, because you never know what might happen. A day will come when our Lord re returns to judge us all. Until then, we must honor his laws and start others along the path of salvation, if we can. That's why we trade with others and work with the tribals. We have more food and medicine, more than food and medicine to offer. Good news is our most valuable commodity, which is a good thing. And do smoke signals, and we'll do some of that, and then we'll get plant cultivation, and then we'll do a little bit of that. But my friends, that is all the time for that we have for today. Let me know in the comments below, if we were to have an intelligence agency for our Mormon New Canaan, what would that agency be called? The secret Mormon intelligence agency? 
Maybe. Let me know in the comments below. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Perhaps subscribe if you're new. Turn to God and stop being sinners. And I will see you all tomorrow after you check out my Discord link in the description below. As we shall defend ourselves against any potential invasion. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.